Welcome back to Whole Future, guys. Today's question comes in from my friend Matt via text message. Check him out on Instagram, Matt's Raw Life. And the article is a Yahoo article called Why We Might Want to Worry More About Sugar Than Salt for Heart Health. So you got to love how these catchy article names, why we got to worry, be afraid, worry, be scared. Okay, why we might want to worry about sugar more than salt for heart health. So basically, I'll read you the article here. All these years we pointed the finger at salt, blaming it for high blood pressure and heart disease, but now evidence shows that added sugar, added sugar, added, added sugar, such as table sugar and high fructose corn syrup. Table sugar and high fructose corn syrup, we didn't hear anything about fruit here, may be an even bigger culprit. A new study in the journal Open Heart, not familiar with this journal, uh, there isn't a link to the article, so I'm not able to read the article. There's no title of the article. We don't know how good this data actually is. I'm just saying. Showed that people who consume 10 to 25% of their calories from added sugars have a 30% increased risk of dying from cardiovascular disease. Those who consume 25% or more calories from added sugar have an almost threefold increased risk. So as consumption of added sugar goes up, we see an increase in heart disease. And we might want to ask, why is this so? Because, as most of us know, in the health community, there's basically two camps of people. There's the high-carb community, who's mostly vegans, who says you should eat plant foods, high carbohydrates, low fat, low protein. And then there's the low-carb community, which thinks you should eat low carbohydrate, high protein, high fat. And so the funny thing is that they agree on a lot of things, but the things that they disagree on, they really disagree on. And so one of these things is carbohydrates. And one camp says carbs make you fat, and the other camp says carbs make you lean. And gosh, guys, I wish it were this black and white, but it's a little simpler, it's a, it's a little subtler than that, and I kind of want to get into it and explain why. Yes, I agree this article is probably right. I would think that refined sugar would cause health problems, and let's get into the science behind why. So, simple enough, something like fruit. I eat a lot of fruit. If we go back to my fruit stash over there, it's something like, you know, I just got like piles and piles of persimmons. And so I eat about, you know, 10, 15 pounds of fruit a day, sometimes more. Fruit has something called fiber in it. And what fiber does, among many things, is that it slows the absorption of nutrients uh, out of the stomach and into the small intestine and therefore into the bloodstream. So something like sugar has a slow absorption rate into the bloodstream from the small intestine as opposed to a fast rate. So what this means is that as sugar shows up in the blood, a hormone called insulin is secreted. Insulin basically escorts the sugar from the bloodstream into the cells that need it for, to burn it for energy. Now, if you have a bunch of sugar just channeling it all at once, rushing it all at once, probably due to lack of fiber in a situation like high fructose corn syrup, added table sugar, what have you, then this insulin hormone is going to, there's going to need to be a lot of it and it's going to spike and it's going to um, basically, uh, you can have high levels of insulin. Now, this may seem like a good thing because after all, insulin escorts sugar out of the bloodstream into the cells. But what you have to understand is that everything in the body is interdependent and insulin does more than just escort uh, sugar into the cells. It What it does is it acts allosterically on other enzymes, which means that it either um, stimulates those enzymes or it um, downregulates those enzymes. And so it has an effect on all these other things. We have this interdependent reality where insulin you know, basically affects all these other hormones and enzymes. And so if we pull up a list here, um, we can see that uh, insulin favors fat storage. It affects things like um, hormone-sensitive lipase. So that's an um, enzyme that breaks down fat, and it basically inhibits that enzyme. And it acts on a whole bunch of other things, but basically what it does is it favors the uh, storage and creation of fat. So if your insulin levels are high, you're going to um, basically be in an uh, anabolic state where you're adding on uh, fat. And you're also adding on um, lean mass sometimes too, which is why people like bodybuilders will inject insulin. So if you eat fruit, 
you're not spiking your insulin, you're not having these effects. But if you're eating refined carbohydrates like table sugar, high fructose corn syrup, any kind of like refined sugar in any form, um, even even stuff like uh, juice uh, is 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 uh, fruit without the fiber. That's going to spike your insulin levels. If you're doing this constantly. You're going to have this lipogenic effect. You're going to create more fat. You're going to create more cholesterol, and you are going is going to lead to heart disease, and it's going to lead to inflammation. So we can't say that saying that carbs are good or carbs are bad is way too much of a blanket statement and not specific enough. We have to look at the big picture, and it's not just the carbs. Every food that we eat has many ingredients, and sometimes when we refine out just one or two of those ingredients, try to eat that as a food, we run into problems. So we got to look at the big picture and see, okay, fruit in its whole natural state does not spike insulin, therefore does not cause this cascade of all these negative effects. Here's a look at all the enzymes that are influenced by that's 14 that science knows about, and there could be a whole bunch more. And so, um, so it's just a reminder to think critically when you see this research like this, and you see that you know fructose is bad. Realize that it's fructose in a refined state, not in a whole food state. So uh, science has a tendency to be very reductionist these days and only look at specific things and make extrapolations and assumptions and jump to conclusions that if fructose is bad in high fructose corn syrup. It also must be bad in, you know, um, bananas, which is absurd. So that's my take on this article. Let me know if you have any questions. If you like this video, if you want to see more like this, where I'm in a shirt and tie, just happened to be in a shirt and tie today, answering scientific questions on scientific articles, I'd be happy to do that for you. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe to these videos. Check me out on. Facebook and also Instagram where I post a lot of pictures of what I eat, food that I forage, and crazy shopping hauls. Thanks for watching guys.